Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Tiffany, a retired librarian turned homeschool mom. And in this video, I looked at an interesting book. Uh, this is Buffalo Song by Joseph, and again, I'm going to repeatedly <laughs> mess with his name here. Um, Brock. So, and it's illustrated by Bill Farns Farnsworth. So, the author of this book is, I'm covering him most of this month. He's a well known Native American author. He writes children's picture books like this. He writes chapter books. He writes adult books. Uh, essentially, his goal is to preserve the culture of Native Americans in the United States and tell their stories. Now, this book is not for the faint of heart. Um, if you have sensitive kids, do not go near this book. Um, partially because it begins with a baby calf whose entire herd is shot down and essentially the animal's tongues are taken out because that's apparently all that's wanted. Um, this is part of essentially the white man's um, destroying of the buffalo herds in order to essentially destroy the Native Americans. So this little calf survives. It doesn't know what to do. It's scared for two days. It's essentially starving because um, its entire herd is gone um, until a, man, a Native American man and his son come they find the calves calf alive and son's like I we want to take can we take care of it and he's like father's like we have a long way to go but I know this friend of mine who's taking in the calves who's trying to save the buffalo so his name is walking Kayak. now this was a real person um, as was his wife Mary um, and this is partially a true story so they take this little uh, buffalo calf to him He's a poor family, it's him and his son and his wife, and they nurse them for a while. This is, um, and by summer, this is kind of uh, early spring, they take them across, originally trying to think that the missions in the say St. Ignatius um, would take them in, but of course they don't. But there, are, there is, is another Native American tribe and they come and help take care of them. And the couple, continue to take care of this uh, eventual growing herd until eventually they're still poor. They have other daughter, they have like several daughters. Uh, no matter how, how hard they work, um, it's difficult because they're taking these buffalo from pasture to pasture. They meet up with another man who, um, let me get into the name here. Um, beautiful illustration, by the way. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, this is the picture of the baby calf. The beginning of this book is heartbreaking um and so he meets up with another man so you see some of the war pictures you're carrying this baby calf who's starving um mom's been killed they feed it you see this is their travels this little buffalo that they used as part of this story as becomes leader of the herd because that's what his her mother was so it's a female-led herd here so, and that was kind of an incident where this little buffalo rescues another baby um, from a wolf because it's weaker. They come, you have the Native American tribes. They, this is specifically the Salish tribe. So, and they have the, basically the land to help take care of them. But then comes, it's difficult. They're poor. And they meet a man called Michael Pablo. So he's, um, again, a real person. He's Mexican and his mother was Indian. So he had come to the land years before and he is wealthy. He owns a large amount of roaming land where the buffalo can roam. And he says, I'll buy the herd from you and I, I'll take care of them because he's trying to protect the buffalo as well because at this point they're near extinction so he comes and take in takes them in and he uh, joins with another man by the name of uh, Charles Allard who's another rancher who remembers the time of the buffalo back when they roamed the plains and they choose to take care of them however at some point the um, and that's kind of that's where the story ends and you see the roaming buffalo. They have this giant herd at this point. 
And then in the back, you have the afterwards. So this talks about the real person, um, whose name I'm not going to attempt to pronounce, but um, his English name is Samuel Walking Coyote. Uh, he died in 1897, his wife died in 1901. Uh, the herd continued to grow, but eventually the government decided to cut the reservation up, and so the land wasn't available. So they tried to sell it to the U.S. government to protect it, but the government never came through with the money. They ended up selling it to Canadians, the Canadians. So they round up as many as they could um, and sent them to Alberta, Canada. And to rescue the buffalo. Now this was not the only group that was trying to save the, bus the buffalo. Um, the Smithsonian um, and a couple of the New York Zoological Society, the American Bison Society were all trying to prevent this buffalo from going extinct. So this basically heard what they could, they got the, I think a good majority of it, went to Alberta, Canada and went to um, Buffalo National Park. So that's where they took them and they protected them and they were able to grow. And eventually Roosevelt set up land for, on three reservations for preservation of the buffalo. And so they began to, and they actually bought back some of the herd. And that had ended up uh, at National Bison uh, Range in Montana in 1908. And then um, eventually, the buffalo is no longer endangered. So you have s members of that herd all over, including at different national parks. And I have a cat now in the door. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can't hear that. I believe that's Obby, our black, one of our black cats. Um, back to this. Um, and uh, you find them at the Wichita Mountain Wildlife Refuge in Oklahoma, Sully's Hill National Game Preserve in North Dakota. Um, the Neil Simon National Wild Ref Refuge in Iowa, and of course um, Yellowstone National Park. So that's where a lot of the members of this original herd uh, ended up. But this is a very interesting story. It's a good picture book that talks about how not only Native Americans, but others work to save the buffalo and prevent it from going extinct. It is now no longer an endangered species. In fact, they farm buffalo. Uh, it's not unusual to find buffalo meat in your grocery store these days. So, um, and this is kind of one of the beginnings of what happened to this actual herd. It's a very well done book. Again, the beginning is a little harsh. <laughs> so your sensitive kids aren't going to like this. So stay away from this book until they're older. Um, age range, sorry, yawning. I have a small child. Again, I only film at night. <laughs> But and that's my calico meowing. I will let her in later. Um, but it it does talk about how they rescued the buffalo because preventing it from going extinct because otherwise it would have. So, but again, it starts off with this basically this baby who had gone hiding is their entire herd is destroyed and they just cut out the bloody tongues because for some reason they didn't want anything else. So it's it's hard read. And then you watch as this poor family rescued this herd of buffalo before getting more help and eventually these buffalo going to Canada. So, and then sometimes coming back. But it's a very, very good book. The author goes through um, kind of this brief little early history on the rescuing of an important creature native to the lands of North America and how a small husband and wife saved, helped, were instrumental in preventing them from going extinct. So, great book, a uh, fantastic illustration. The illustrator is, um, he's just a standard illustrator. Uh, he does specialize in illustrating stories with Native American history and themes. So I don't know if he's Native American himself, but he does in fact live in Florida. Um, but that doesn't mean anything because there are Native Americans in Florida. So, but again, it's a fantastic book, has beautiful illustrations. It's a good way to introduce children to another part of the Buffalo story. You often hear about them killing them, but you don't really get the story of how 
they still exist and how we rescued them. And again, it has this afterward where it talks about the history and what happened and how they went to Canada and the reservations that were set up to protect these creatures. So that is the end of this review. Again, sorry about the yawning I film at night because child. So um, if you like what you see, be sure to like and subscribe. Um, I have covered quite a few uh, Native American books, uh, typically by Native American authors. Uh, Joseph Barak, uh, or my, however my horrible pronunciation is, I am very, very sorry. Um, I should probably look that up at some point. But I've covered several of his books, particularly um, this month of November of 2022. This is just, uh, be aware, is being filmed in December of 2021. Um, with a lot of my book reviews, yes, I film them in advance just because I can. It's easier because these books are going to change. Um, as of this filming, this book is still in print. So it is still available. Uh, so be sure to check that out. It's a great book. Again, I cover books like this. I cover Native American books usually in November. Um, I do some African American stuff and Asian American stuff usually if almost always by uh, authors of those specific communities and that is something I um, focus on if I'm going to cover books about a specific culture or community um, I try to find authors who are part of it and um, if I do ever color co cover books by the LGBTQ community that is what I'm going to do I'm going to find actual authors of that community to um, if I'm going to review those books. Uh, as of right now, those are not on my list. <laughs> so, but I probably will cover them at some point in time. I also cover a bunch of other stuff. I've done Cinderella books. I'm doing The Princess Diaries next year. I'm doing The Guardians of Gun Hole next year. Um, but I've done some Tamora Pierce books. I've done a wide variety of stuff as well as from children's books to chapter books, um, as well as covering various different films nothing that currently in theaters um, a mixture of princess stuff to nostalgia stuff from my childhood to educational stuff so it, it really does vary um, so be sure to check it out um, like and subscribe and comment if you please thank you